Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're going to be talking about power. More specifically, power consumption of your aquarium. How much does it cost to run your aquarium? At the moment, at least here in the UK, everyone's banging on about these energy price increases which are just around the corner, which are going to load up extra cost onto your electricity and gas and power bills, basically. So I thought it would be interesting to take a quick look at how much energy your aquarium is consuming, what are the big hitters, and what can you do about it? If you're interested in knowing what your aquarium uses in terms of power, you can get these cheap energy monitors off Amazon, whether it's ones that plug in or you clip them onto the line. You can calculate for yourself how much uh, energy your aquarium is using, and then by turning each bit off or checking each bit individually, find out how many of these little tweaks, how much that could save you over the course of a year, for instance. You might well be surprised at the cost. I will be generalizing a lot about this, but basically you're looking at three main things. It's going to be your filtration, it's going to be your lighting, and it's going to be your heating. Obviously, if you're keeping cold water fish and you don't heat your aquarium, you're onto a winner. But if you don't fancy switching and want to keep tropical fish, you're going to have to have some form of heat in the aquarium. So we'll, we'll include those things. I won't include things like skimmers, uh, air circulation pumps, all those kind of things that you might have as extras, but we'll concentrate on the main ones. Let's get the easy ones out of the way. Lights. If you're still running halogen bulbs, fluorescent tubes, incandescent bulbs, get rid of them. Swap them out, get some LED replacements in, that's going to save you an absolute fortune over, over time. Nothing, nothing I talk about here today is going to save you money in your pocket instantly. This is all over a course of time, the pennies will build up. So let's assume you've done the sensible thing, you've got rid of your old energy inefficient bulbs and you've replaced them with LEDs. The next thing you've got to be thinking of is why are you not using a timer? Timers are fantastic if, for nothing else, they will help you keep your aquarium and maintenance under control. Um, you're not going to accidentally forget to turn your lights off. You're going to make sure they're going on and off consistently every day, which is going to help your plants grow if you're keeping a planted tank, as well as save you some money. As well as timers, um, think about what you're using your aquarium lights for. Are you using them just to see your fish or are you using it to try and grow plants because if you're not trying to grow plants you might not need as intense a light as you would otherwise need so you can dial back on your lighting uh, use a wo lower wattage um, lighting can be very complicated in this video I'm only going to be talking about efficiency rather than best so if you're only interested in efficiency then the lower wattage the better um, so like I say if you're not keeping plants if you just wanted to see your fish Swap that out for a really small wattage cheap light uh, and that will save you a lot of money in the long run. Filtration, um, if we're splitting this into heating, lighting and filtration, filtration is the only thing you really need to be running 24-7. Luckily, filtrations are, tend to be more economic or tend to be more efficient depending on the type that you're using. If you think about the, the main options being a, a, a sponge filter, an air driven sponge filter, that's going to be using a small air pump, might be one, two, three watts, something like that. If you're using an internal filter, again, they seem to be in the range of kind of three to five watts for a smallish tank. Obviously, the more you scale up, the more watts you're going to consume. Hang on back filters, again, a little step up from maybe internal filters, if all things are equal. Um, they might use a couple more watts and then canister filters is probably where most people would go to for the bigger tanks or the bigger filtration requirements there in my experience it seems to be the brand or the quality of the canister filter that you're using might be uh, a lot different for instance some brands naming no all pond solutions have thousand liter per hour external filters that consume way more than comparable brands from your big names like your Fluvals and your Eheims. I'll let you do your own research, do your own homework, check what works for you. Um, but this isn't something you can necessarily just, right, I'm going to whip off my hang on back filter and swap it out for a canister. Obviously these things need to be done in a controlled fashion so you're not losing all your beneficial bacteria, that type of thing. But could go into the planning. Um, so if you're thinking about starting a tank, think about what you want to run it and to maintain it with. That leaves us with probably the big hitter. It's going to be your heating. If you're heating a freshwater marine, whatever kind of tank, if you need to apply heat to it, you're going to need to use an aquarium heater. 
There's no getting away from it. There are some arguments and some misconceptions on tinterwebs about how best to do that. Some people will argue that you should use a, a higher wattage heater because it will get your water warmer quicker. Some people say no, under, it, it doesn't matter. If you use a 300 watt heater, it's going to heat your water quickly, but you'll consume more watts where a 150 watt heater would get to the same place over a longer time consuming the same amount of watts. As long as your heater is appropriately sized and will maintain your tank at the temperature you want to maintain it at, it doesn't really matter what size it is. There are a myriad of things we could talk about here, about doubling up on heaters for redundancy and that kind of thing, but again, we're concentrating on power consumption and cost and efficiency here. So this isn't necessarily advice about what's best to do, this is about what's most efficient to do. Tips uh, when you're thinking about heating is consider where you're putting your heater in your aquarium. If you're putting it to this off to one side, is it concentrating on heating up that one area or is it in a good flow area where it's heating up the whole um, aquarium? Use a thermometer, check that the entire aquarium is up to temperature and it's maintaining that temperature. Um, the heaters will come with usually instructions saying you must mount me vertically, you must mount me um, at 45 degrees or horizontally. They're all different, but often they're nonsense. So check that it's actually doing what you expected to do in your aquarium. There are other things you can do as well to help your heater along. The goal here is to have your heater on as little as possible. So if you're not using a heater that has an internal thermostat, get rid of it. Get one that does. Um, Heaters shouldn't be on, they should be plugged in 24-7, but they shouldn't be on 24-7. Unless you are running an aquarium inside a freezer, there's no reason your heater should be on all the time. So you want to get a heater that will, once it's reached its ideal temperature, it switches itself off and it maintains itself. Again, not talking about best, because then we'd be into the world of heating controllers and things like that. But as a minimum, get one for the thermostat, make sure it can keep you at the temperature you want it to keep you, keep your tank at the temperature you want it at and maintain that. Think about other things. So this aquarium behind me doesn't have a lid. That's terrible. <laughs> if you want to reduce the time your heater is on, a lot of the heat will be escaping because there's no lid there. If I could put a lid on that, whether it's a polycarbonate sheet, uh, some aquariums come with lids, it could be cling film, it could be anything across the top of it will minimise the heat escaping uh, and save you some watts. Similarly, you might want to wrap your aquarium. You get the, some people will, for the winter months, wrap their aquariums in foil, um, like bubble wrap foil, backed bubble wrap. Not the front, obviously, but the sides and the back, they'll wrap them with that. Um, again, we might do some tests on that in the future, but that does work anecdotally. I've never had to do it myself, but it does work. It saves you some watts. One thing that I quite often do with my in-house tanks is it's winter drop the temperature. Why am I running my tanks at... Are you running your tank at 25 degrees? Does it need to be at 25 degrees? Can it run at 23 degrees for a couple of months? You're sort of imitating nature. Again, I'm generalising hugely here, but you don't need to keep your tank at the same temperature year-round. That's not what happens in the wild, so why should that happen in your house? It might be a good idea to think about, just for the winter months, let it go down a couple of degrees. Think about the positioning of your tank. Have you got it next to a window that's open? Have you got it in a drafty room? Heat the room that you're in. Keep your tank somewhere where it's warm and then you'll have to spend less money powering the heater to get it up to the temperature that you want to get it at. Um, all, all these kind of environmental things, don't have it in drafty rooms, don't have it in hallways. Um, some people go to the extremes of actually moving their tank into a warmer room for the winter months. Whatever works for you. So hopefully within that you'll find a couple of tips that might help you save some pennies. Um, if we talk about the amount of money that you're spending on kilowatt hours consumed, anything you can do to reduce that will help. Let me in the comments what kind of tips and tricks you would use, whether it's just for one small tank like this or big tanks. They, they all kind of scale up these solutions. So let me know what you're doing. That might help some others and we'll do a follow up in a, a couple of weeks, couple of months time and see what happens because we have this energy crisis here in the UK that prices are about to skyrocket. So anything we can do can help each other out. As always, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found something useful here, but make sure you drop a like. All these things help immensely. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.